All right, everybody, welcome to Q, and I just really want to jump right into this and not make this an overly long uh, video. If you do not have a Q account yet, you will have to go to qplatform.com to set up a uh, account for the system. You do get a 30-day free trial to go in and test all these things out. I'm going to log in as my Paris Creative account. I am the number one customer of my own product here, so we're just going to jump right into this. And from here, you'll see there's actually events in here because this is what I've built up over the past year or so, um, putting all these things within the system. We're absolutely going to go through each of these sections to make sure you're all prepared for it. And we're going to start all this with the admin side. The admin side is pretty critical to make sure that you've established everything within the system. So this way you can take advantage of everything like building your proposals, sending out automations and the like. And I do want to make sure that there is a distinction between the premium features side of the equation and the essentials side. For essentials, you will not have access to things like automation and templates and payment gateways, along with some other features within it. It is a fully free side of the platform, but of course we do have limitations on this. I'm going to be showing this almost exclusively as a premium product. I'm going to first go through details, and as you set up your account, the details are actually extrapolated from that. This actually becomes part of the main directory of the system. No longer do you have to worry about putting in information about other vendors and venues within the system, if anything more than just once. Um, we've actually scraped um, over 100,000 uh, businesses within the system, but if for some reason they don't exist, and as you add your account into the system, this acts as a main directory of all this. So having this information in here um, and having it correct is actually a pretty important piece in all this because anybody searching uh, for you to add inside an event and whatnot will be looking for this information. So ensure that this information is correct. You can, of course, add a logo of your business in here as well. I'm going to go back in here. We're going to go into social media. Now, right now, we're not really utilizing exclusively the social media tools in here. They are going to be coming in the, uh, the not too distant future. Um, but I just wanted to get people aware that you can put things like your Facebook link, Instagram, TikTok, and so on within the interface um, along with social media tags that you readily use. Later on, when we start using uh, our social media pieces within the platform, you'll see where these really start to kind of kick in and make a big difference um, in your life. But for right now, go ahead and fill in that information if at all possible. Now, for employees, you can add employees um, into the system, but be aware right now, we have not focused on the multi-op aspect of running within Q. Um, so you can, for instance, add employees into an event itself and add them into this listing, but we don't have things yet like having the granular experience where you know turning off features like say financials and whatnot. So be aware that as of the filming of this, this is a fairly limited um, piece of the puzzle, but some big changes will be coming um, hopefully in 2023 uh, to be able to much more uh, readily uh, manage your uh, employees and how they access the system, how they're assigned into here and everything. But just be aware that you can do um, some bits of this right now. Um, and just as a note, you as being employee or is the first employee listed within there. Um, inside vehicles, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you put your vehicles in here and you'll be able to track mileage on it and put any vehicles, of course, within the fleet. I actually used to have my town and country, which I no, no longer operate anymore. I sometimes have a rental and my main vehicle. And no, I'm not worried about my license plate information in here. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go on the bottom here uh, for a quick second uh, to kind of go over some more simpler stuff in here in general. You'll be able to do things like your number display if you have different currencies that um, are in here. We have enlisted, of course, all the global currencies that are out there, but they will be coming over time. You can also set a global overtime rate um, that's in here, so that way, um, as a default, it will go to that value. In addition, we do have payment gateways. Right now, um, we have both PayPal and Stripe as options. Square will be coming in the not too distant future. Um, I'm personally connected to PayPal, so when you do connect it, it'll actually show you which one is actually connected. Um, you know, as time goes on, if you have some additional uh, uh, thoughts of other uh, uh, platforms, I know Maru is out there that some people have been interested, is something we'll definitely look and examine to uh, add into the system. I'm going to go back into admin here for now. 
And I really want to focus here on packages because packages becomes really the nexus of the entire program. Doing things like being able to establish which contracts are applied to which ones, the timelines and whatnot, how much the value of those um, uh, proposals that you're sent out are by default set here in packages. So I'm going to um, do my most popular one here, my ceremony reception. You can toggle between a flat rate and hourly rate. I do know there are some people out there that sometimes offer like a full day of service or like a half day of service. And of course, you can just choose that by 24 or 12 hours of a base package. I personally offer six hours as part of this package. Setup duration. Um, this allows the system to be able to calculate when you should arrive at these um, these venues. So in this case, I always show up three hours in advance. So I have this set up. Um, as part of my duration, so it will automatically, if I have to uh, be there for 3 p.m., or if I have to start setting up at 3 p.m., it will tell me I need to arrive by noon. Um, again, you have your price, your value of these packages themselves, and again, if you choose between flat or an hourly rate, that will reflect that. You have your retainer uh, value, and that, of course, can be set at anything, and it already pulled the $200 flat rate that I personally put in the system. You can, of course, override this um, if you like, uh, or set each of these packages with different overtime rates if you please. Uh, right now, we're not fully utilizing details and notes, but that is something we're going to be adding in the not too distant future. Um, you can put some of that information in here right now. Just be aware that they're not reflected in areas in the system yet. And as I mentioned before, like with timelines and contracts, this is where you establish where certain things are and whatnot. I've set up a whole lot of different tests and everything within this. Um, so there's a lot uh, within this list. But just be aware, we also have um, default templates in here. We're going to jump in that in a minute. They'll allow you to set these up in, an either, in a much more uh, quicker fashion, if you like. I'm going to go back to business admin for a second. Add-ons, as you can imagine, are pretty simple and straightforward. Um, anything that's beyond your package that you would like to add on per, um, per instance and whatnot. So that way you have a more uh, cultivated uh, proposal, if you like. Um, we're going to actually go backwards on this here for a second. Preferences. This just sets things up like your time zone and also sets up an important piece about doing the maximum number of events. Now, me as a solo op, I can only do one event per day. So it only makes sense that if I'm not available that day, that I can easily notify uh, the clients that I am not available. Um, you may not want that as a feature. And if for some reason you do not and you want to field all the inquiries coming in first, you can either choose to tick or untick this alert client if event date is overbooked. And in my case, when I am booked, um, I can uh, bring up this template. Um, this is very similar to the other templates that are in the system for things like automations and whatnot, allowing you to do things like inserting variables within the system. And I, again, I put like uh, specific uh, DJs that I personally uh, recommend uh, when I am not available. I'll show you what this actually looks like on the client side here in a second. But what you will want to do is if you want to use our internal forms, this is the link uh, for that form. And you can uh, embed this in things like buttons and whatnot on your website. This is personally what I do uh, within mine. I'm going to go back here for a second and we're going to go into templates. And this is where a lot of the meat and potatoes of the program really happens where you can set up different contracts, you can set up different timelines and different uh, uh, messages within your automations. Now, I do want to make a note um, as the point of this filming, we are actually adding a big enhancement to automations called Smart Tasks, uh, which will significantly change this for um, more granular uh, control of things and all that. So just be aware that if you set this up, it will come into the new system as well. But I just wanted you to be aware of what's coming up. Let's start with contracts here for a quick second. Um, I personally have decided on a singular contract uh, to manage my events. And the good news is this is the same contract that is embedded in Q. So if you don't have a good contract or if you want to use bits and pieces of what I've developed as a template, you can easily do that by clicking on add contract. It will automatically bring the seated contract 
into here and you can decide whether to remove it all modify in portion or just take what you have in here and you'll notice just like in that other uh, window that had popped up for the information request we do have a number of variables that you can see it into the contract so that way it pulls the variables of the events as you're sending these contracts out this is a, a fairly proven contract that i've had for a very long time um you know again if you have uh any desire to use this, this is what the system's built for. So you can simply just add this contract, make any modifications if you would like, and you're off to the races with having a contract. We're gonna go now into timelines, and timelines, and you see I've thrown a whole bunch of uh, junk in here for uh, doing some testing in here. I generally use just one timeline since I am mostly just wedding based. And uh, we're gonna actually take a look into that right now. We're gonna go ahead and here, come in here and edit. And you'll see that we have certain areas like arrival time, start time, and end time in gray. And we have that in here because we want people to be aware that we're actually going to pull the contract and proposal information. That way, when you originally have your start, or should say your arrival start and end time, they can't be modified unless a new contract is signed. This allows both for um, you know, some definite communication uh, agreements uh, between the clients and the business so they don't uh, accidentally say overbook your time or change something up that you were not expecting. Um, but this way, it just keeps a little bit of control uh, within the system. Most other ones, they just give you a straight timeline that can really be kind of wonkly kind of put together and all that. Beyond this, um, and again, this is actually my template. I've actually modified it ever uh, so slightly from what's in the system. But what you see in here is basically what you would see in the base timeline. You can now take all this information that I have uh, built into these templates. You can uh, add or remove if you desire or start this all from scratch. But this essentially becomes now your core forms for your clients to uh, see and edit and um, you know, completely fill out for you during the, uh, the process. This really, I think, uh, gives a, a real distinct advantage for Q to have this streamlined bit of information um, that can be gathered in here. Um, for me, for instance, I have a basic information tab that kind of just has all the, the non-milestone uh, questions, you know, fi figuring out guest counts and uh, monograms and things of that nature. But it gives me some uh, really basic top line information that's in here. Now we have, um, in this case, a pre-ceremony where I do things like, you know, where are the ceremony services located? And, um, you know, is it uh, going to be um, in the adjacent area, reception area, alternate area, whatnot? Is there power at the site? This is all information that comes in here. And I actually want to get rid of this because this should not be in my template. Um, but this gives me the um, incredible detail that I can capture for every event. This is always repeatable because this is part of the template um, that is part of my uh, ceremony reception packages. And even just my reception package, I'll just put in for a ceremony to remind uh, to the couple that I'm not doing it, but it may become a, a talking point of that. All of this is, again, to simplify the process for clients to put in information inside the event itself and we'll go inside an event in just a couple moments you'll see that this information um you know gets filled out and it allows me to take uh, whatever actions of course necessary on that event you'll also notice little clocks on each one of these um, when you're inside an event itself you can actually set the time for each of these bits so this way you have a fully fledged timeline and also uh, be aware that you can uh, totally drag and drop entire questions and entire sections within the system. And again, once you've uh, saved this as a template, this becomes the repeatable thing for all your events. But the beauty of this is for every event, they can be modified and it won't modify the template itself. So you start with a baseline that works for say 95% of all your events, but if you have special sections that are happening, special questions, things of that nature, they can be completely customized for each event. And just basically just go through each of these. Um, I should uh, note to you also, there is a music picker in here. Um, I'm gonna do this in a template, but then erase it. Uh, just like you saw Mariah Carey. So if I start typing in Mariah Carey, um, what it's gonna start doing is look inside of both the artist and the uh, song titles and sort everything by popularity and allow the client basically to select any of these. It gives, it's called a type uh, ahead feature. So this way they don't necessarily have to type in all that information. 
nice and simple keeps it very very quick uh, for the client so um, I highly recommend um, you know going through all these uh, questions and all that seeing if this is the same type of template that works for you and your process again you can delete all these questions or start from a completely blank template if you like so now we're going to go back over here into automations this is another big piece uh, within the system where we've built all these email templates within the entire process to help you with your lead capture getting the information about the event getting payments and the like um, this is a bit rigid right now um, as I mentioned a little earlier in the process we actually are updating our automation templates to be a bit more flexible in this so you can do things like change timing and whatnot but what we have right now is a set of core uh, emails um, in this I have done some tweaks for myself uh, for these and again you can tweak these to your heart's content and just like all the other uh, inputs in here we do have uh, certain variables that can be called per template so that way if you want to have say your company name in here first name in here automatically pulls that from the information but I do have some very specific things in here like I set up Calendly as part of the system where they can go and pick the best time for us to talk I put that right in the first email um, that hopefully uh, kind of spurs that conversation and the speed of the process right along I also have like a little Q&A uh, type thing that I wrote up that I give them as um, some information as they're interviewing and all that of course you can uh, address this to your heart's content and this goes through all the processes including meetings proposals your contract reminders retainers and if they're overdue your planning meetings when the events actually happening the post event stuff payment due and things of that nature and that really kind of sums it up for business administration. Again, I really, really um, uh, stress um, going through all of this and making sure all the information is where you would like it. It is very critical that if you want the system to work to your advantage to make sure all this is filled out. And I do want to make one additional note in this. By default, we turn the automations off. Uh, so this way, uh, accidental emails don't go out or anything like that. So as you're tweaking all this and you're ready to start testing out, all you have to do is go into that automation bit again, again, in business administration and automations. And there is a master switch called automations active. And all you have to do is turn it on and off. You can also turn all the major sections off. Um, for myself, I actually turn the meeting confirmation off because I use, again, Calendly. And they already have a confirmation system built in. Um, but again, at your discretion, you can turn all these um, on and off for what you need. Um, from here, we're going to end up uh, jumping into events and all that. So let's do that. All right, so we're in the events section now. And again, these are all my current events uh, that are coming up. And I am going to go through an entire process now of how things uh, come in. And actually, I'm going to start at, on my website and show you the information request form uh, that we have here. I have it embedded in my contact uh, link up here. Also on the bottom, I have some uh, inquire within call to actions. So when they click that, it's actually going to go to that link that I showed you in preferences earlier. And now this is going to be, in my case, because I have it enabled, a smart check to see if I'm actually available for the date. So if I choose, say, the 25th, which I know I'm booked, I will get this uh, uh, information bit that I again you can uh, customize to your heart's content I for me I put in all the DJ's that I recommend in the area um, but I can also go back here and choose a date and this happens to be the day that I'm filming this I'm going to say this is a wedding ceremony reception I've got a temporary email set up here in the background so I'm going to copy that into here let's just call it what it is do, do si he why not and we're just going to throw in a weird phone number. I'm going to put in some notes. And we're going to have a robot check in here. Now, the hope of this is having the robot check in here that you won't get any junk that's coming in. But of course, that's not always guaranteed. Um, so what ends up happening is it'll come into the inquiry uh, section here. You'll see a little charm pop up. You'll also get an email alert that this uh, uh, event has come through. And now you can have a choice of if you want to add it into the system or if you want to uh, deny it. Again, if you think it's spammy or if by chance um, they picked a date that you didn't have uh, really available, you can hit deny inquiry. You will have to send a manual email out. We don't have an automation for this bit yet, 
but in this case if I decide to do convert to event a couple of things are going to happen first this pop-up window is going to pop, uh, come up and I can add more information to this if I know if they say in the notes that uh, by chance the um, the venue referred me I can choose referral uh, event professional for that I can make modifications as necessary it brings the information in from uh, the form again I can add additional bits of information in here and notice that we're in the lead stage so when we save this is now going to go into the lead state where in my case I have that intro email and additional emails that will send in a 28 day period that is part of the lead process uh, this basically gives them that first email uh, reminder that uh, hey I'm available let's have a meeting and if for some reason they don't respond in the next three days seven days 14 days 21 days they'll get a loop email uh, kind of nudging them along that they need to uh, contact me and then by the 28th day a humorous email will go out kind of reminding them that hey you know you filled out my forms what's up and uh, hopefully we'll get some information from them but what's going on now in the background now that we're in this lead state and you see it's automatically advanced to that part I now know emails are being sent in the background within the first five minutes they'll get that first introductory email and now it's a waiting game you know you always are waiting for the the couple to respond in this case saying that hey you know I've booked a time for us to talk and let's you know, you know get to that so I'm basically waiting for that to happen now um, in the background uh, I've already seen this email just came through we're gonna assume that they've had a meeting I'm going to advance this now to the meet stage. So a couple things are happening at this point. One, uh, the entire lead state is now ended. Uh, so no more of those lead emails will be potentially sent out. Um, and in the case, since uh, I have not set uh, enabled meet automations on my side, um, no other things are gonna happen during this meet stage. Cause basically, um, again, since I'm using Calendly, I've already have those automations from their system um, having this. Now, I do want to make an announcement that we are going to be looking to integrate Calendly this year um, into the system. And what will happen is if they do book it, it will automatically advance it to the meet stage. Just one less thing that you'll have to worry about in this process. So let's just say we've had our meeting now. Um, I'm going to end up having a couple notes that came out of it. So I'm going to add a note like initial note and fun stuff again you can throw anything that you would like in here i just basically any of the highlights of the event i'll list in here um, i'll almost always ask them which venue they're going to operate in so i can scroll down here into venues and choose a venue that they've selected and basically just building up the information about this event you'll see there's some more sections in here we'll uh, dive into that just a little bit but now I'm at the point where you know the call is ended. I've uh, known enough details now that I can give them an actual proposal. So I'm gonna go in here into proposals and I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And we're gonna choose the times that they selected. And we're gonna assume they actually have a little bit of overtime here. So we're gonna do like three to midnight. And again, I have three uh, packages in my setup. I'm gonna go ahead and choose ceremony reception, brings over the value of 3,200. But notice it also pre-fills out the retainer information and the overtime information. This is all pulled from the package. So again, this is one of the reasons why packages are so important. So this way it's continuously updating this proposal as we build this out. Let's just go ahead and say that they added uplights as well. So I'm gonna add my standard uplighting. And again, you can see that everything is still adding down here below. Please note that you can also manually change any of these values if you want. So if I want to call this a $5,000 ceremony reception, if I would like, that's what I've got. Plus adding overtime and the add-on, I'm at $6,000 now. I can also have uh, travel fees, um, if necessary, discounts if I would like to apply. I'm just going to leave this like uh, this for right now, and I'm going to hit save. So now I have this proposal in hand and um, I'm almost certainly going to want to send this to them. You could, of course, build multiple proposals if they have a couple ideas in hand and whatnot. But we're going to go ahead and send this proposal out. So we're going to hit email. It's going to uh, pull the information from uh, the client 
right directly into here. We already have this um, pre-filled in for you, so that way you can either just send this as it is, you can do some tweaks if you would like. Um, in future iterations of Q, when we do our new smart tasks, we'll have some um, ability to customize this as a template as well. But we've pulled in the information as necessary. We also uh, right now get your email and your phone number in here to populate it. And we're gonna go ahead and hit send. A couple things are now happening in the background. One, the client is being directly sent uh, this proposal. And also if we go into the event details, we'll see it's now advanced to the proposal stage. Um, now a whole series of emails are queued up and ready to go, including a seven day, 14, 21 um, day loop email and a final email at 28 days um, to basically you know, nudge them along to hopefully look at the proposal and uh, request a contract. Now you don't have to send a proposal. If you don't want, you can go write the contract um, if you desire. And I am looking in the background. I did, uh, the client did get their uh, reception uh, contract proposal here. And now essentially again, the waiting games happens. But let's just say they've uh, contacted us and said that they want to have a contract now. So we're gonna go into proposals. We're gonna go into that particular proposal that they wish. We're gonna hit convert. And it's gonna just double check to make sure all the information's correct, um, including setup time, it'll calculate in here. We'll also double check to make sure venue is populated. If a venue has not been selected, now is the time it will need to be selected because you do have to have a venue to go to. There needs to be a destination uh, for this event. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And now what it's done is taking the proposal uh, that we had and it's uh, attached a contract that's selected um, to the bottom. And again, this is where the importance of having the package set up properly because now we've taken the contract that we've defined in the package and attached it to this. If you of course have different contracts, those will attach as uh, desired within here. But we're going to go ahead in here, we're going to hit share with client. And again, just like the proposal uh, one, we can have custom text and do anything that you would like in here. And when I go to hit send, a couple things will happen. This is actually where our logic check will happen to see if they actually have a login with Q right now. If not, they'll get a email inviting them to uh, establish their account with Q to set up and sign their contract. Um, this includes uh, getting information like making sure their street address is right, making sure their names, of course, are spelled correct and whatnot, phone numbers. And um, that will start that process. If by chance this is a repeating customer or whatnot, they're gonna see this exact email come through because it'll just be a straight contract link that comes in here. But it does double check to make sure that they have an account in the system. And if they don't have an account in the system, it's gonna go ahead and send that invite. Now we do have a, a, a few people that has mentioned over time that this is a little bit of a complicated process and I do agree. And we're actually gonna be simplifying this process um, in hopefully the next quarter or so of this year. But this is the way the, the system is set up right now. So I wanna make sure you're prepared for what is happening right now. And notice when we sent the contract out, um, it's advanced now to contract. And once again, the prior emails will now stop the new emails for contract, including the seven day, 14, 21, and 28 day reminders will go um, into the queue and uh, get ready to get sent out. And now again, we have the waiting game. The hope of course, is the client sees uh, the, 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 the information logs into the system and goes ahead and signs the contract. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sign that contract now so we can get to the next step. All right, now that the contract is signed, I'm gonna go over all the major sections within here just to make sure that you know everything that's kind of going on. Of course, we have a photo that's possible up here on the top. Um, on the second line, it will show you the amount um, and the amount due. And note, you can actually have multiple contracts as well. Some people will split out services and you can actually have multiple contracts that are active that will uh, automatically uh, tally up here in the HUD. Of course, the event date, when you need to arrive, um, the uh, start and end time, days till the event itself. Each one of these steps, if you have premium, will uh, uh, deploy potentially one or more uh, automations uh, against it, like in lead, again, uh, three days, seven, 14, 21, 28 uh, days, uh, one or more emails will be sent throughout that, the meet stage proposal, so on and so on throughout the process. Uh, below this, we have timelines now that are active uh, now that the contract is signed. 
um, everybody can uh, access timelines. And uh, just to make a note, the client, what you see here, um, they are seeing a, a good portion of the same thing. They see the amount that's due. They don't see everything up to the book stage because it's just not relevant for them, but they will see the book planning, preparation, and archive stages um, that are part of that. They will also see things like the timelines. They will also see things like documents. They will see expenses and payments. And going down to here, um, expensive payments, if you do have your payment gateway uh, set up, they can actually make payments within queue through that payment gateway and it will come down and record not only the payment in the system but any fees that are associated it into expenses of course proposals and contracts um, you can also note your phone calls and appointments um, as desired you can have one or more clients assigned in here you'll see there's a little blue area um, that means that's the primary client if you have secondary clients they will just have a light blue uh, star there so you know which one is the primary you can assign uh, one or more venues uh, per event. You can assign multiple vendors within the system. And since I am a solo op, just one employee, of course, is assigned here myself. Uh, but if you did have uh, different employees, you could assign them uh, to these events. I'm going to dive a little bit more into timelines now because uh, I think this is a very unique uh, proposition that Q has. As noted before, the uh, areas in gray here will actually be pulled from the contract itself and again the client can see all this information here as well they can't delete the sections and all that but they can fill out the information and that's what the encouragement is is to tell these clients to go in here uh peppy and fun and whatever and th again these are the questions that i've used as part of the template you can choose your own questions and your own order speaking of order um all these can be both sections uh re uh, sorted and also questions resorted this does not affect the template uh so this way each one of these events can be super super uh unique in here um you could ask a question like just say favorite song of all time and we can actually tell this to be a music picker and with that we can go in here and actually just resort it just for the heck of it and the music picker actually uh, queries the Deezer database and let's say they're big Queen fans well it's first going to sort by not only the artist name but the song title as well so you'll see there's kind of a mix of things that are in here but let's just go let's just start saying under pressure it's going to keep on sorting and sorting and sorting until basically again we'll have in here now you'll see there's what seems to be some mismatches but a lot of times these things can be also associated with albums um i do believe uh, bridge over Tr trouble water is a queen of soul thing so that's where you'll see uh, that sometimes come through but we'll just go ahead and choose queen under pressure um, you can remove a uh, whole uh, questions if you want. You can remove whole sections if you want as well. Um, I personally uh, try to keep as much information as possible because even if it's not necessarily 100% relevant to me, having some baseline information that might be going on to the event could just make my life easier in the end. Um, a couple just quick notes in here we do have some interesting bits that are pre-built in here again you do not have to use this template but we do have a five star picker between the ge general decades and genres um over the past like 70 years or so again you can ask and uh, remove all these questions add new things as you will i do have some must plays and plays of possibles in here i actually do not put a do not play list in here but if they do specify things again i can add these songs manually um, and it does again not affect the template all these are saved um, in real time uh, so as they type each little character it's being uh, saved in the background and lastly as you complete this if you want to have a pdf copy of that all you have to do is click download pdf it'll take a second it'll compile everything and then it'll list it in here um, since there's not really that many questions that were asked there's only a couple things that were actually filled in here but you get the picture uh, we will ultimately allow for some customization in here as well so you can turn certain uh, questions and sections on and off but that will be in a future enhancement but that uh, kind of like wraps up the major event section. Again, this is a listing of all my major events. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this test that we were working on. Um, but we can go in here, I can look at this event that's coming up next week. 
I can go into here and start seeing some of the information that they have. You know, they're offbeat, easygoing, considerate. I know I've got a big kick component that's coming in here. Um, I do know from the dance segment, which I've already recorded here at 745, there is a whole lot of uh, K-pop in here. So there will be some additional downloading that I need to uh, double check and make sure I have uh, all these songs on. But I also know they do love um, a lot of house and uh, top 40 as well, as long as from two th 2000s, uh, some pop and uh, some early house as well. So I have a good foundation of what I know I'm going to be doing with a couple. But this is the beauty of this. For any profession, be it DJ, photographer, videographer, caterer, um, planner, venue, all these questions can be completely customized and basically learn all the ins and outs of your clients from a very easy and managed uh, perspective. Um, as you see here, I've got payments that have applied, so I know that things came in through PayPal. I got my two payments. Um, just nice, simple, straightforward. We try to keep this all easy. We didn't want to inundate people with a ton of text as they're going through all this stuff. Um, so just trying to make things easy. Yes, you will sometimes run into a little wonky bug here and there. Um, in this case, we started adding uh, last names uh, to this, and we found out that it was sometimes blowing out uh, the size of it. So we're actually uh, making a fix for that. But, you know, this is not 100% perfect software. Um, we're always improving on what we are, our general offerings are. We're constantly hearing feedback from all our clients. And naturally, as you're going through this, anything that comes up from process to missing things, a bug, please make sure you reach out to us so we can make sure we improve and make this product even better. But again, I wanted to make this relatively short. Again, uh, changes could be coming at any point because uh, again, we're always making these uh, big improvements on anything. Please reach out to us with any questions. I hope this tour was at least uh, pretty uh, informative and beneficial for you. Um, have a great day, guys.